Knowledge is powder. Wait, that's not right. Knowledge is chowder? Flounder? Oh, for goodness sake. Hello all and welcome back. Today I have yet another Frostmage guide just for you. Well, this one has been long in the making and I know that a lot of you have been waiting for it very, very patiently and probably want to get into the juicy uh, stuff immediately. However, with patch 10.2, a lot of people came back into the game and there's a bunch of new players as well. So I believe it is a good time to first take a look at the basics. So number one, let us start with stat priority. As far as single target is concerned, the best stat seems to be critical strike up until 33%, but it has to be uh, no less than 30%. Then comes mastery, then haste, and then versatility. If you look at AoE, however, you will be seeing that mastery takes priority over critical strike and the rest stays the same. I did some digging and look at the top 10 players from Mythic Plus and raiding. On average, they seem to have the following stats, 26% critical strike, about 40% mastery, about 38% haste and about 10% versatility. However, whenever you get a new piece of gear, what you need to do is not just immediately discard it based on these stats, but to use a simulation tool. I will leave a link down in the description section below for raid bots and simulation craft add-on. So whenever you get a new piece, just sim it and see if you get more DPS or less DPS. A lot of new players who are getting into Frostmage seem to be uh, struggling on which race to choose. Uh, I've did some analysis on this as well. It seems like for the Alliance, Dwarf, Void Elf, Human and Mecha Gnomes seem to be doing a little bit better than the rest, especially Dwarves because of the critical strike ratio. For the Horde, Troll, Tauren and Blood Elf seems to be dominating uh, as far as Mythic Plus is concerned. I've seen very strong Orcs and Goblins as well, so that's that. That's it as far as races are concerned. Let's move on to gear. As far as gear is concerned, the very first thing you should be aiming for is to obtain Forset from the new raid. There are multiple ways of getting this. Number one is obviously do the raid on LFR, Normal, Heroic, however high you can go. Number two is getting a tier piece from your weekly vault, either by doing raids or doing Mythic Plus or rated PvP. Another way of obtaining it is sometimes to the weekly quests. For example, this week there's Legion Time Walking and the reward for that is a cachet which awards you a normal piece, which may or may not contain a tier piece. Which four slots of the new set that you are going to use depends on your embellishments. If you are going to be playing Mythic Plus for the most part, go for the Azurave 2 set. So for this, you're either going to craft the slippers with the shoulders or slippers with the chest piece. You cannot use shoulders and chest because you will no longer have four available slots for your tier set. If you're raiding, I suggest crafting two items with the Shadow Flame Tempered Armor Patch. Most people craft it on waist and some other piece. I have seen waist and chest or waist and cape and whatnot. Other than that, let's check out what we need so for the neck whatever neck piece you end up getting use the medallion enchantment that you're seeing on the screen in order to unlock three sockets for your gems as far as gems are concerned you definitely need skillful illimited diamond this is your like main gem that is obtained through crafting on the other slots you either go with keen nelthrite or sensei's nelthrite based on uh, whichever seems higher which is very related to the stat distributions that i've shown you before then moving on for the cloak, you would need the enchant graceful avoidance. For the chest piece, waking stats still seems to be the strongest enchant for frost mage. For the wrist, use devotion of avoidance. The belt enchant that you need is shadow belt clasp. For the legs, go with frozen spell thread. For the feet, go with watcher's dome, which gives you stamina. I have seen people use speed enchant instead of watcher's dome, but at the moment we're not like super duper geared so whatever stamina that we can get is gonna help us for the rings either go with devotion of haste or devotion of critical strike again based on whatever seems higher and lastly for the weapon sophic devotion still seems to be the strongest enchant before moving on to trinkets i quickly want to mention that you would want alchemical flavor pocket on one of your crafted items it's not a dps increase but it will surely save you some money if you're raiding or doing mythic plus on a regular basis all right now let us move on to the trinkets this time instead of just showing you the top three trinkets for single target and top three for aoe and just refer you to the blood mullet website i have to take a different approach the most ideal way to choose trinkets is the following 
in one slot, you either want Bellorelos the Sun Caller, which drops from Tindril Sate Swift on the new raid, or you want the Balefire Branch, which drops from Mythic Waker's Manor. These will be your on you string kits. Both of them are very strong. Bellorelos is a little bit stronger, but you should only have one of these. In your second slot, you either want Pip's Emerald Friendship Badge, which drops from Council of Dreams, or Augury of the Primal Flame, which is a rare drop from Firak the Blazing. An alternative for players who are not raiding and just doing Mythic Plus could be Sea Star. However, this seems, however, this seems a little bit weaker than the other two options. Here is the idea. What you want to do is take one on use trinket, make a macro similar to mine, so that you use it along with Icy Veins and then combine it with a passive trinket. Before moving on to the rotations, let me quickly talk about consumables. For the power potion, elemental potion of ultimate power is the best. For the healing potion, you would like to be using Dreamwalker's healing potion. For the file, either go with file of elemental chaos or ice file of corrupting rage. Speaking from personal experience, at the beginning of the patch where you do not have much item level, Ice file of Corrupting Rage could be very dangerous because it takes away health from you as time passes. So, so usually I use file of Elemental Chaos at first, and then once I'm like fully geared and everybody in my team is geared and we're doing high keys, I like to go to Ice file of Corrupting Rage. For the food, go with Grand Banquet of the Kaluak if you are very rich. If not, if not, DVC Deviled Eggs are a good. A personal food alternative they give you the same stats one is for the entire team the other is just for you for the rune i go with buzzing rune and for the augment rune either go and buy dreambound augment rune which requires you to have 18 renown with the new faction dream wardens it is a little bit pricey thanks to blizzard who just wants us to sink our gold into something if you're looking for a alternative there's draconic augment runes but you can use them like only once and this thing is forever so so make some calculations and guess which one is more cost beneficial i just couldn't be bothered with like buying stuff from the auction house all the time so i just bought this all right now we can move on to the actual dps part of this guide but before we get into single target and aoe talents and rotations there's a simple yet very important mechanic that you need to understand the mechanic is called shatter so what does this shatter do basically whenever you're damaging a frozen target it takes your critical strike multiplies it by 1.5 and adds 50 percent to it so for example if you have 28 percent critical strike multiply that by 1.5 that's 42 plus 50 percent that's 92 percent critical strike chance as i mentioned previously you want it to be about 30 percent for purely single target and around 27 28 percent for mainly mythic plus and aoe oriented situations the frozen condition on the ad can be achieved in various ways either through your rooting abilities such as ice nova and frost nova it is this like the bits at the bottom of the ad or through your flurry ability so whenever i cast flurry it puts like these two winter's chill effects on the ad that you can see one and two so this basically triggers the shatter mechanism and and the next attack that i apply basically uh, has a huge chance to critical strike on paper 33 percent critical strike will give you 100 percent critical strike chance at the end based on this uh, ability however you do not want to be doing that because at that point you will be losing a lot of haste and mastery and mastery is actually very important it buffs your uh, frozen orb your blizzard your ray of frost glacial spite like a bunch of very very important dps abilities as far as these winter chills are concerned how would you spend them so iceland's ray of frost and glacial spike consume one of these and your AOE abilities such as Frozen Orb, Shifting Power, Blizzard, and so on, they do not consume these stacks. On top of this, there's one simple combo that you need to know, and it will apply to almost everything that we'll do moving on. So that is casting Frostbolt on a target and following this Frostbolt with a Flurry, which I'll show you right now. So please observe the Flurry charges. One, two, three. There's like three projectiles going away. Okay, if I cast Frostbolt and then immediately Flurry, you will see that the three projectiles like will hit it early on. In the old days when Frost Mage was very, very simple, the ideal single target combo would be Frostbolt into Flurry 
and then two ice lenses. However, life is complicated now, so a sample combo would be Frostbolt into Flurry, immediately followed by Comet Storm, Ice Lens, Ray of Frost, maybe. That's an idea. I'll get into the details in a bit. So let us now talk about single target. First things first, the talent tree. The right hand side of the talent tree, the frost points, they are 100% the best choices ever. Just take it as it is. The left hand side, the mage points, for the most part, everybody will have something similar, but some things can be tweaked around depending on the encounter. For example, I have seen people use energized barriers to get rid of rooting abilities in certain raid encounters. I've seen people use time manipulation where your crowd control effects play an important role in the raid. So if you want to take these two, maybe you can drop Incantation of Swiftness. I personally use it to like move around sometimes. Uh, mage is slow. Another thing that you may want to change uh, is Accumulative Shielding because the shield basically melts immediately in the raids, especially at this point where we do not have enough uh, item level. Before actually showing you the full rotation, allow me to first, one by one, go through some major abilities that you need to be careful about. Let us start with Comet Storm. The way you use Comet Storm is immediately after you cast Flurry. An example would be Frostbolt into Flurry and then Comet Storm. Ray of Frost should be used only when you have one last Winter's Chill left. So for example, let's say you flurried and then say you have glacial spike so you use glacial spike or ice lance just spend one of it and then the remaining winter's chill you use it with ray of frost i was a little bit slow there because i was talking to you so ideally immediately after glacial spikes you use it so you get the full winter's chill effect during ray of frost now the complicated ability is glacial spike how to use this is very conditional but the main idea is you want to be using it whenever you have a winter's chill proc if you have four icicles, which are like these things that are around my mage, at the fifth icicle, you will get the glacial spike. So at this point, if you have flurry, you can cast flurry and then use glacial spike. That's one way of doing it. If you have three icicles, you want to use frostbolt into flurry and then glacial spike because flurry gives you one icicle, frostbolt gives you another. That's two, you already had three, five, boom, go into Glacial Spike and the target is Winter's Chilled. So what if you have five Icicles and no Winter's Chill on the target and you may have Brain Freeze, which is this like Empowered Flurry or just a Flurry, how would you use Glacial Spike? So the idea is the following. You would cast Glacial Spike and then immediately follow it by Flurry. Flurry travels faster than the Glacial Spike if you're at a sufficient distance. That means when the Glacial Spike hits the target, the target will already have Winter's Chill. So that's amazing. That's what we want. We get the full damage. If you are casting Glacial Spike on a target, that can be frozen with your root abilities. For example, these guys. I froze them with Frost Nova. Instead of using Glacial Spike into Flurry, for these guys, you may want to use Glacial Spike into Frost Nova or Glacial Spike into Ice Nova. Preferably Ice Nova if you have it because that deals more damage. So, for example, you have the following situation. You cast Glacial Spike and follow it into Ice Nova. You saw the Ice Nova froze the target first and then Glacial Spike hit, critical striking the Glacial Spike and giving me the damage that I want. This is not for raiding because raid bosses, for example, this guy Raider's Training Dummy, they cannot be frozen with your root abilities. But certain adds in the raid can be frozen like that. So I'm still including in, in the single target bit, but it's mainly for Mythic Plus. If you are in a situation with only one Winter's Chill, do not cast Ice Lance uh, because it would travel faster than Glacial Spike, removing the Winter's Chill before it's the target. Now, all of these things are a little bit complicated. You may be wondering, how do I start an encounter? So the opening idea is the following. You want to cast Frostbolt into Flurry. Whenever that Flurry hits, you want to cast Icy Veins, which you have your used Trinket bound to via Macro, which I've shown before. Follow it immediately by Comet Storm, one Ice Lance, and then Ray of Frost. It's a little bit complicated. Allow me to demonstrate. Frostbolt into Flurry, cooldown, Ice Lance, and then Ray of Frost. It's rough, but once you pull it off, mwah, 
its juice. All right, on the screen, you're basically seeing the rules of thumb for single target. You start with the opener. If you are casting Frostbolt or Glacial Spike and you don't have Winter Shield on the target, immediately follow it by Flurry. Or if you are at four icicles, just use Flurry. Comet Storm should be used right after Flurry when you have two Winter Shield charges. Ray of Frost should ideally be used on your last Winter Shield rock. Next on the priority list, you have Glacial Spike. Frozen Orb, you should basically use whenever you have less than two Fingers of Frost procs and ray of frost is on cooldown shifting power is basically used when everything is on cooldown comet storm ray of frost icy veins and so on to get your uh, abilities back and lastly you have ice lands when you have fingers of frost or you have some remaining winter's chill sprock all right now that we have the rules of thumb set allow me to demonstrate a single target rotation Before moving on to AoE, let me quickly mention what to do if you have two targets. For example, if you're doing Council of Dreams on Amidrasil, everything is pretty much the same as single target. However, when you have two flurry charges, there are some situational things. If you have four icicles, you want to use one flurry on the off target, follow it by Glacial Spike, then use the second flurry on the main target and then keep on doing your usual rotation. Again, flurry the off target. This time use one ice lens to get glacial spike. Immediately use glacial spike afterwards. Then use the second flurry on the main target and keep doing your rotation. Honestly, if you're gonna get confused by this, just keep doing your single target rotation. Doesn't really change much. All right, now let's just talk about AOE, my favorite part. AOE, these are the talents you're seeing on the screen. Again, the right hand side, it's the best option. Left hand side is situational. Personally, I run a ton of Mythic Plus, so I definitely go with Dragon's Breath, which is a CC ability, and Blast Wave, which basically knocks back everybody. It's useful for Sanguine Weeks, it's useful for interrupting small acts. I love Spell Steal, because there's a bunch of things in almost every dungeon that will benefit me whenever I Spell Steal it. Sometimes you may want to re use Remove Curse, depending on what kind of healer and what kind of other DPS you have. Again, some people use Energized Barriers. For example, when you have Entangled Affix, Energized Barrier becomes really useful. All of this is up to you. Just tweak around with these to your liking. Now, the rules of thumb for AoE. These are much simpler than single target, hence my reason for loving AoE, but it goes like this. Pawn of Cold is priority only when your Frozen Orb and your Comet Storm are on cooldown. Then Orb is the next important thing, followed by casting Blizzard, because Frozen Orbs makes Blizzard instacast. Then Comet Storm, then Glacial Spike into uh, Ice Nova, preferably if your targets are freezable. If you don't have Ice Nova, use Frost Nova. If your target is not freezable, cast glacial spike into flurry and lastly use your ice lances with fingers of frost and winter's chill the opener for aoe so you basically want to precast your blizzard follow it into orb immediately use your cooldowns then use comet storm now your comet stone and orb is on cooldown so follow it with cone of cold use orb use comet storm again finally end it with shifting power and if blizzard is back and it should be back up just cast blizzard so allow me to show you that it's very, very fun. The opener is the following. Because Blizzard, or cooldowns, this, that, repeat. I have Blizzard back up. So I'm using that before shifting power. It's a little bit better this way. And of course, end it with Blizzard.
Okay folks, that's it for today. I really hope that you enjoyed this guide. Before I go, I want to mention two things. Number one, I started streaming on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Attila Place. Come and join me on Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays. And number two is what you're seeing on the screen that only a very small portion of my viewers have actually subscribed to the channel. If you are interested in receiving more content from me and want to support me and my PhD process, please consider liking, sharing and subscribing and check out the cool membership benefits. Wink, wink. That's it, folks, and take care.